What's up traders? This video is going to be a tutorial on combining two indicators together to create a signal in TradingView. It's going to be a coding tutorial, but don't be afraid. I'm going to make it easy. Have you ever had this idea, had an inspiration for what happens if I combine two indicators together? Maybe I can make a signal of my own that will give me a really good profitable setup. Well, I've been down this path many times before, and I'd like to share my research with people on TradingView and the internet at large. I did a study before, not too long ago, well, two years ago, where I combine Bollinger Bands and Stochastic RSI together. And I made this available if you want to search for it on TradingView. And I even put the code down here for people to learn from. And I made a video about how I made it. And so I've done this before, and I actually had a message on Discord the other day from one of my members thanking me. They just randomly discovered that I had made this. This is an inspiration that they had had, and I already put it together. Well, once again, I was inspired by a member of my Discord, Happy Cloud, who posted her research where she was studying the crossover of a 55 EMA, exponential moving average, versus the Ichimoku Kijinsen, which is a component of the Ichimoku set. Very interesting that she went through here with her eyes and arrows and marked off when this seemed to occur to do this study. Very rigorous, and but oh, it kind of pains me to see somebody try to do this manually. So we're going to make this a little bit easier by making an indicator that's going to show us when this happens. And if you follow along, I'll try to go slowly as I can, but I have 20 minutes to do it based on TradingView's limits, so let's jump into it. The first thing we want to do is let's put our base indicators on the chart. Ichimoku Cloud is what we're going to start with. Go up to Indicator up here and add it. Now, we also need an exponential moving average, so let's do exponential moving average. All right. Now, we've got the two indicators up here, and we're going to take off everything we don't need. The Kijinsen in the trading view vernacular is baseline. Why they call that, I don't know. But there we go. I let, let me get my colors the way I like them. I like my Kijinsen to be green and my EMA to be red. Okay, so now we've got our two indicators here. How do we make them talk to each other? Well we've got to make an indicator. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Pine's editor, and this is going to bring up a fresh bit of code for us here. Now, how do we start here? Well, here's a little trick. We can go into these default indicators from TradingView, and we can look at their source code. Ah, yes, we can steal their source code. All right. So I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to do a big old copy up to the point where we get to indicator because we're going to name our indicator something different. So we're just going to copy everything over. Let's go to our new indicator and we're going to paste that right in there. All right, now let's go ahead and fit all this. So we're going to call this the uh, Kijun and moving average cross. That's going to be our indicator title. That's going to be the first thing we put here. Now, what makes it nice and cute or small on the side right here is we want to give it a short title. So let's go ahead and put that in. So that's going to be short title all together. And we're going to call that KSMA. There we go. And one final thing, very, very important that we need to do. We need to do, well, let me just show you what happens if you do this. So we save this. Yes. And we add it to chart. Oh, it brings it up on this lower pane right here. We don't want that. So I'm going to go through the make mistakes with you guys that I go through when I program these things. We need to make sure that we have overlay equal to true. What that does is that overlays it on the top chart instead of the bottom. 
So we're going to take that off and we're going to add to chart. Boom. There we go. We brought it all back. Okay. So let's take off Ichimoku, <clears throat> the one we don't need there. And remember, we don't need all this other stuff. So we're just going to take everything out that we don't need. And we need to be very careful that we don't take out more than we need the code wise. I'm going to switch up here and uh, there we go. We need to keep the Donchi in here. This is the code. And the way we know that is because the baseline that's being, let, let's start from the bottom, just kind of explain how things are going. All right. The thing we want is the baseline. That's the key Jensen, right? So if we look here, the plot, okay. So the plot is referring to baseline. Okay. So we have to make sure that we have the baseline line right here, which is equal to Donchian, which is a function, which is right here. So we need to make sure we have all these right here. Okay. So we can take everything else out. So if we're copying, if we're hacking code, we start from the bottom and we work our way back up. We don't need any of the rest of this stuff. Okay. Let's cross our fingers and see if this worked. Excellent. All right. Now I want my color again to be green. So we're going to change that color from the hexadecimal color to color dot green. All right. And bring it in. All right, cool. And then for me being a stickler for things like that, I'm going to name it properly. All right, that looks good. Okay, now EMA. Let's go through EMA. Let's grab this code. Let's steal this source code. Okay, a lot of extra stuff in here from their EMA. We're going to clean it all up. Let's grab everything up to the indicator. Copy it over. We can come back up here to our source code there. And we're going to paste it in here. All right, now let's clean things up just a little bit. So let's do this. Let's do Ichimoku code. And then we're going to do EMA code. All right. So the length is something we're going to need. This is going to be for our MA. This input we want to keep. The source, we can keep that. Offset, I don't think we're going to need to offset this back and forth so we can take that out. All right. That looks like some codes. So we're going to leave that. That is, yes, that's the EMA there. So let's see. EMA. Okay, so we don't need this smoothing line. Okay. So no, we don't need any of this stuff. All right. And then I want my EMA color to be red. Okay, let's try it. Oh, what do we do? Okay, so we took off the offset. Yeah, we don't need that offset. This is all you got to do. Just let it tell you what line, what messed up, and then keep going. Boom. All right, there we go. Now, I think her default was 55, so we're going to punch that in right there. We can change this in, of course, the inputs, but every time we save it, it's going to revert back. So if we put this in, it's going to be the default. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we can take off our EMA there. Boom. We have now put together these two indicators. All right. Mission accomplished there. This will be the point I would pause for questions, but we're going to keep going. All right. Now we got to do the magic. Now we got to let it tell us when it crosses. So how I like to do that personally is I like to do a background color. Now we could do it with arrows. But my style is to highlight the background and let that show me with my eyes when it happens. So how we do that is with BG color. And BG color, what we need to do is give it a color. So if we do just color.green, then we're going to color our whole chart bright green. Gross. Okay. So we only want it to do it when we want it to do it. So we need to that out we need to add some logic in here okay so let's start with that do this cross code so if we have an up cross basically 
what that means up equals when the out is greater than the cadence. In other words, when the moving average crosses the cadence. And you know what? I don't like that. So we're going to do this. We're going to do the uh, moving moving average. And then we need to change this. At code, you need to make it your own. Moving average is greater than KS. Okay. So that is when we have an up cross, when moving average crosses up above cadence. In other words, moving average is greater than cadence and crosses above it. All right. Down. Okay. Moving average crosses down. That is our down cross. Okay. So that's our logic. So what we need to do is we need to say CG color up. And what we need to do is we need to add in an if statement. Now, I had to actually go and check this because they've done some really good development on TradingView code. They've changed over to version 5 now. They used to do simple if, comma, then. But now they made it a little bit more streamlined. I like it. Up if is a question mark. Okay. So if up, that is what it's saying. If the situation, if the condition is up, then the BG color, what we're going to put in here, color.new is color.green. Okay, and what that does is that says, okay, BG color is going to be what is inside this parentheses. Okay, and so what I've done is I've added logic to say, if the situation is up, then the condition is green. And then what we need to do is we need to say NA, which means if it's not up, don't do anything. Don't color it. All right? And then in case we want to change that, in case a user wants to change this, we can we give this a title so it will show up in our settings. And we'll call it an up cross. All right. So let's just see what happens when we do this. Make sure it works. Okay. So it didn't like the KS because I, oh, because I didn't change this. All right. That's right. I bet someone was watching me do that and they saw it happen. All right. Let's fix our variables. And unassigned argument. Oh, it wants to, okay. It needs one by default. Got you. So what it's asking for here is a transparency. That basically means if you have a transparency of zero, like so, then it's going to be a, it's not going to show up at all. If it has a transparency of 100, <clears throat> then it's going to uh, embarrass me because, oh, you know what? Let's go in and add our second one and see if that doesn't fix the problem. That's because probably way back in the other part of the chart, it is doing it and it's not crossing back over. All right. Fingers. And we're not seeing anything. Let's change this to something else. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, all right. Well, it did something, but why is it showing this? Well, we need to make sure that it only happens on a single event. And so how are we going to make it only happen on a single event? Well, we have to add an additional condition. We need to only highlight one bar. So we need to do this when there's a cross. And over there to be a cross, that means the bar before needed to not be the same condition. So here's how we're going to fix that. Moving average is less than KS. And then what we do is we say... We add a one in brackets to the end, which 
tells it evaluate the last bar. And there we go. Now we put two conditions together, and they both must be true for that to be true. So moving average. Reverse that. KS1. All right. Cross our fingers. Boom. Now we're getting somewhere. So now, and we can actually bring this down. Now we can see where we have a cross right here. The red line, the moving average, cross below the Cajunson. And so it highlighted this bar for us red. Here we had a crossover down, and then we had a crossover up. And then here we have a crossover here, and there's a bearish. And now what we can do, instead of going through and trying to see with our eyes, we are going to actually have the indicator highlight it for us and make our research that much easier. Now, of course, you could program this into a strategy in TradingView, which would trade for you. It would basically give you a back test. If you did this, if you did that, if you, you know, took a trade on each instance, what would happen? But that is outside the scope of this video. And I would really have to sit down and put a lot more time into that. But hopefully this mainly helps out people that uh, want to put two indicators together. Remember, go back and look at my Bollinger Band and RSI crossover one that I did uh, several uh, months ago. This one's a little more advanced and I used uh, arrows in that case so you can learn how to do it from there. Hope this helps everybody to uh, trade wisely and we'll see you in the next video.